If you're considering moving from Sacramento to Seattle, this is the video for you. I'm Christian Harris, the team leader of the Seatown Real Estate team here in Seattle. I've lived my entire adult life in Seattle and traveled extensively. So I'd love to tell you some of the differences and what to expect if you're moving from Sacramento to Seattle. I'd say the biggest thing is gonna be the cost of living. The cost of living in Seattle is about half of what it is in Sacramento. Now, other areas of California, I know that won't be true, like Los Angeles or San Francisco is actually more expensive than Seattle. But as of the time of this recording in January of 2023, the median sale price in Sacramento is $450,000. By comparison, the Seattle median sale price is $927,000, so almost double the price. Now I'd say that's the biggest difference. Some of the similarities are Washington also doesn't have a state income tax. The weather may be pretty similar to what you're used to. It sounds like Sacramento gets about the same amount of rain as Seattle does, even though I would say that, that Seattle has two seasons. It has you know nine months of rainy winter and then three months of beautiful sunshine and summers, uh, while well, it sounds like Sacramento has you know four actual seasons. One interesting thing to note about the rain in Seattle is that no one around here uses umbrellas. If you use an umbrella, people think you're a tourist. I don't know what it is, if it's just because it's a drizzle and not a very hard rain, people just get used to the, to the rain, but uh, that's kind of the, the reputation around here. Uh, no Seattleite uses umbrellas, and so if you do, you're gonna look like a tourist. I myself don't care, I don't wanna get wet, I'm gonna use an umbrella even though I've lived here for you know 37 years. Another similarity is that outdoors is very big. Lots of outdoor activities close by, mountain ranges, ocean, all that kind of stuff. So you'll be right at home when it comes to that kind of stuff. But presumably if you're coming from Sacramento, you already know about Sacramento. So let me dive into some of the Seattle specific stuff. Let's start with a little orientation of the Seattle area. So right now we're looking at the Puget Sound, which is this body of water here that goes out to the Strait of Juan de Fuca and out to the open ocean. Seattle's this tiny little thing of land right here and is really, you know, starts about here, North Seattle, goes down to downtown here and into kind of South Seattle, West Seattle over here. Uh, the major uh, the major features uh, when people say, you know, West Side, East Side, um, if they're not talking about the, the west side of the mountains, which is the Cascade Mountain Range here, which splits Washington in, uh, in between the eastern and western side. Um, if they're not talking about east or west based on that, they're talking about uh, east or west of Lake Washington, which is this large body of water here. It may not look too big on the map because everything else is so big, but this is about 30 miles from the north tip of Lake Washington down to the southern tip. Uh, and there's two floating bridges that go across this, the 520 floating bridge, which is a toll bridge, and the I-90 floating bridge, which goes across Mercer Island as well, and goes right into downtown Seattle. Uh, so the Puget Sound here, you've got uh, Elliott Bay, which is you know the, the body of water right outside of Seattle, the Seattle waterfront, uh, and West Seattle over here. Uh, and so Seattle, when you're looking to the east, uh, you see the Cascade Mountain Range. So those are those beautiful mountains, uh, which Mount Rainier is part of down to the south here. Uh, and then you've got the Olympic Mountain Range, which is the Olympic Rainforest over here, uh, which is gorgeous. Lots of great backpacking um, and wildlife over here. Um, and so this is really downtown here. So, you know, when you're flying in, you really you see a ton of green and a lot of water. And then you see this tiny little city here in the midst of all of it. Um, so it's really a gorgeous area surrounded by a lot of water, a lot of greenery, uh, a lot of wildlife. Then you have the suburbs around it with the biggest suburb being Bellevue, which is it's a very large uh, and wealthy city in its own right. Uh, it's much newer and much more polished uh, than Seattle, which tends to be you know, older and a little, a little grittier, if you will. But definitely still has some you know, nice neighborhoods, some historic areas, historic neighborhoods. So one of the big things that Seattle's known for is its weather, its rain. People think it rains here a lot. And really it rains a lot as far as the number of days it rains, but does not rain a lot as far as the quantity of rain. Seattle isn't even in the top 50 for the cities in the US that get the most rain, but it is in the top five for the cities that get the longest amount of rain as far as the number of cloudy days. The average city rainfall in the US is 38 inches, which is exactly what Seattle gets, with the most amount of rain being Miami with 67 inches a year. However, summers in Seattle are perfect with temperatures ranging from 71 to 79 degrees, sunny, light breeze, no humidity, absolutely gorgeous. And because of the temperate climate in the winters, snow isn't even really an issue. It gets on average five inches of snowfall a year compared to the country's average of 28 inches. Now wildfires have become a thing here, not so much around Seattle, but you definitely get wildfire smoke from Eastern Washington or blowing up from Oregon and California, uh, usually a, a week or two a year. 
It can be pretty bad with pretty low air quality, you know, usually in the near the end of the summer. In August is usually when you start seeing that. You don't get that every year, and it's not always as bad, but we have been seeing that on and off for the last few years. Now, I will say traffic does suck here. Uh, if you looked on the map, you'll notice there is a lot of water, which means it's kind of hard to get around. It's one of the few cities in the country where people take ferry boats, not just for pleasure or to visit other areas, but also for work and for commuting. Some people live over on the what we call the Olympic Peninsula or on Bainbridge Island or one of the many San Juan Islands, and they'll actually take ferries into downtown Seattle to go to work. Now, thankfully, if you don't want to drive, but you do need to commute, there is a good public transportation system between the buses that run downtown and from the suburbs in and the light rail that runs from the suburbs in. The buses and light rail can also be a good option for sporting events as parking during sporting events can be as expensive as $60. So you definitely save some money taking public transportation for that as well. Now, lifestyle in Seattle is very outdoorsy, very active. Breweries are a big thing, craft beers are big, food, sports, we have it all. You've got pretty much any outdoor sport or activity you wanna do within 45 minutes of Seattle, from hiking, biking, kayaking, uh, mountain climbing, to mountain biking, uh, rock climbing. There's all sorts of stuff to do. And the winters, skiing, snowboarding, sledding, that sort of thing up in the mountains. If you love coffee or beer, you are in luck. This is the coffee and beer microbrew capital of the world. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but you've got a ridiculous amount of coffee and breweries around here. Obviously, this is the home of Starbucks, and there's Starbucks on every corner, but there's also tons of mom and Paul micro coffee roasters and micro breweries all over the place. It's also a very eclectic and international city, so you can get any type of food you want from anywhere in the world in Seattle, and it's absolutely amazing. Seattle is also very health conscious. You've got a lot of Ma and Pa grocery stores. You also have Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, tons of farmers markets. Even some of them are year around. Education and learning and museums and culture are also very big around here. Seattle actually has one of the most highest education rates of any city in the country. Seattle is also a very hilly city. It's actually the second hilliest city in the country, second only to San Francisco. Seattle's actually built on seven hills. People also love walking and biking around here. So with those seven hills, there's a lot of up and down. It also means when it snows here or it freezes, it makes it really treacherous. And so usually the whole city will shut down for a day or two on the, till the snow or ice melts. Speaking of snow and ice, there's actually a thing here that people like to call the Seattle freeze. They like to say that people just aren't very friendly around here. Uh, maybe they won't look you in the eye when you're going down the street. Now, I think that's generally true in most urban areas if you're downtown. Uh, typically, people are keeping to themselves. They're walking there not for pleasure, but to get to work or you know they're on their way to something. Uh, when you get it to some of the other neighborhoods that are a little more you know family friendly or uh, have less hustle and bustle, where people are a little more laid back, I think they're definitely more friendly or you get out to the suburbs. Um, I don't think that Seattle is any less hospitable or friendly than any other city. So I don't really think that the, the Seattle freeze is really a thing any more than uh, any downtown urban area um, would be you know, less friendly than maybe walking in the suburbs. Now pets, Seattle is incredibly pet friendly. Dogs and cats, especially dogs, uh, lots of dogs, lots of dog parks. There's off leash areas. Uh, people love their dogs. There's even you know, some restaurants and breweries and cafes uh, that let dogs uh, come into or they might even have you know, treats and water for your dogs as well. So very pet friendly. Now housing and cost of living, it is no secret that Seattle is an expensive place to live. The cost of living is very high, but the quality of life is also very high. There's a reason a lot of people want to live here and move here. It's probably why you're watching this video yourself, you're thinking about relocating here. And I'd love to help you if that is the case. My contact info is in the description below. And as far as the types of neighborhoods, there is a wide variety in selection. Some people want to live downtown, urban living, maybe in a high rise luxury condo. There's lots of that. Uh, maybe something a little quirkier, a little older, you know, there's stuff like that in U District or West Seattle you know, as far as apartments go uh, or things you can you can buy. There's also suburban living uh, where you can still be in the city but maybe live in a neighborhood that feels a little more more quaint or friendly, has neighborhood shops and uh, ma and pa, you know, independent restaurants and bakeries and cafes, that sort of thing. Uh, or maybe you want to go out to you know the suburbs of Seattle where you have the traditional franchise or chain stores and restaurants and grocery stores and that sort of thing with planned neighborhoods and communities. Uh, you'll tend to find that in the suburbs or on the east side, you know, east side of the lake, like in Bellevue or Redmond or Kirkland. Uh, while in Seattle, you don't have a lot of the planned neighborhoods because the, the city uh, tends to be older. And so it's very eclectic. Uh, you might have, you know, an old uh, war box or bungalow or craftsman home, you know, next to a new modern, you know, straight lined, uh, minimalist, you know, new construction building. But the point is there are neighborhoods and styles of living for everyone in Seattle. 
Now attractions, we've already talked about, you know, a little bit about the, the food and the, the coffee and the drink scene. Uh, now if you like, you know, museums and local theater, concerts, uh, all that kind of stuff, there is a ton of venues for that sort of thing. Uh, and it's fairly affordable here as well. So that's big uh, in Seattle. There's also lots of tourist attractions. So when your friends come to visit you from out of town, you can take them to the Space Needle, you can take them up to the Observation Deck, you can take them out to Lake Union and watch you know, the sailboats and the seaplanes land, or you can take them down to Pike Place Market to the famous fish throwers and watch them do that, or go down to the Gumwall and Post Alley, or walk down to the Seattle Waterfront where the big Ferris wheel is. Really, there's tons of stuff to do for both locals and tourists alike. I myself have been doing some of my own, you know, tour your own city type of stuff. Uh, and a lot of the tourist activities are really fun. There's actually a Seattle underground tour, which is pretty amazing. Uh, if you don't know Seattle's history, it actually burnt down in the late uh, 18, I think 1880s. Uh, and they rebuilt the, the current city on top of that. Uh, so it's pretty interesting history, uh, downtown Pioneer Square, which, which is the oldest area of Seattle. Now, day and weekend trips, we are really close to a lot of stuff. A couple hours from Canada, a couple hours from the ocean. Uh, there's, you know, an hour and a half and you can be on the Olympic Peninsula in rainforest. 45 minutes to the east, you can be up in the Cascade Mountains. Just a little longer than that, you can be over the mountains into eastern Washington, which has a very uh, Midwest feel as far as the climate goes. It gets very hot and dry uh, in the summertime, very cold and snowy in the wintertime. Uh, Western Washington uh, is, is a lot wetter and more temperate. It doesn't get very cold or very hot because the wet ocean air builds up against the Cascade Mountain Range and makes a lot of rainfall here uh, and keeps the temperature pretty consistent. I did talk about plays and theater a little bit, but also has an amazing music scene. It's actually rated the fifth best city for live music in the country. Uh, it has a lot of musical history. Obviously, Jimi Hendrix is here. Grunge music in the 90s was born here. So there's a lot of musical pedigree that comes from here. And Seattle's also very much a sports town. We love our sports here, from the Seahawks to the Mariners to the Kraken and the Sounders. Now let's not forget college sports with UW Huskies. Part of the great quality of life that I talked about a minute ago is also healthcare. Healthcare here is really great, and especially hospitals in the country. You got Harborview, you got Children's Hospital. People come from all over the country to get specialized care here. It's absolutely amazing. As far as industry and economy, obviously tech is very big here. You also have Boeing and Microsoft and Google and Facebook. There's a lot going on here, which is part of the reason people want to live here because the job market is so good. One of the other nice benefits of living here is there's no state income tax. So Washington is one of the 10 states that does not have a state income tax. Now, if you do live within Seattle city limits, the city of Seattle does have a fairly high city income tax, which at the time of this recording in January of 2023 is at 10.25%. Now in a second, I'm gonna to get to some of the less desirable aspects of Seattle. But first I wanna say, if this video has been helpful, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you wanna get a hold of me or, or set up your own consultation about what it would look like for you to move to this area or for me to help you buy a house, then my contact info is in the description below and you can set up a consultation with the link in there. Now on to some of the less great stuff about Seattle, uh, homelessness. Um, homelessness is kind of an issue here. Uh, the mental health issue, uh, homelessness, it, it it was you know, worse a few years ago, so the cities have been doing a better job of, of dealing with that, you know, creating some permanent solutions, partnering some great nonprofits to help not only get people off the street into housing, but also get their underlying conditions of you know, drug abuse and mental health um, taken care of so they can live you know, productive uh, and healthy uh, lifestyles. Uh, but it is still an issue here in the city. Uh, we do have a fairly high uh, number of homeless people. Um, sometimes that spills out into the streets, sp specifically in uh, downtown. Uh, you, you, you know, might see them walking around uh, or, you know, tents. Um, sometimes there's uh, homeless encampments. Um, sometimes they're sanctioned by the city. Sometimes they're not. Um, but that is, you know, kind of part of the, the deal with living in, you know, a big city these days. Um, one of the other things that, you know, people don't like to talk about is crime. Um, now, crime rate is relatively you know, subjective as far as, you know, if you're looking at uh, comparing Seattle to, you know, maybe the Midwest town, yeah, crime here, you know, might seem kind of high. If you're looking at it compared to some of the other big cities in the country, Seattle's crime is actually fairly low for a big city. Property crime is fairly high here uh, compared to some cities, but fortunately, uh, violent crime uh, is, is fairly low here. So you might get your car broken into, um, but uh, you're not gonna, you know, likely get stabbed or shot. So, you, you know, there's, uh, there's that, so that's good. But the uh, you know, local police and sheriff's office you know, does a good job you know, responding and taking care of uh, you know, that, kind of, that kind of crime. So 
And on a happier note, Seattle actually has a really great schools, both public and private options. The entire Seattle school district has actually been rated a nine out of a 10 on the great schools website, uh, as well as Washington is actually rated number four for public schools in the nation. And there's also some charter school options and some private school options that are great as well. Kind of alluded to earlier, but Seattle is very outdoorsy and it's a beautiful, amazing area covered with green and water. Uh, so that leads to some very beautiful landscapes, beautiful sunrises over the uh, Cascade Mountain Range and some sunsets over the Sound, uh, Puget Sound and the Olympic Mountain Range, uh, as well as Mount Rainier to the south. And there's actually several amazing viewpoints in the city. Some of the better known ones are Cary Park uh, or Gasworks Park uh, in North Seattle. And there's also Hamilton View Park in West Seattle, which looks out over Elliott Bay at the Seattle skyline. Absolutely amazing. So those are just some of the highlights of what you have to look forward to in Seattle. Absolutely amazing city, beautiful, gorgeous, great quality of life. You will love it here. If you have any specific questions about relocating here or how it may be different in the city you're coming from, feel free to contact me down below or there's a link to a free consultation. I would love to talk to you and help you any way I can.